Hey, good evening everyone. I welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in our channel here is called High Yield Dividend Warriors. So because we're going after high yield dividend and a lot of people ask me why? Why are we doing this method instead of the normal, you know, you know, uh, 401k retirement plan, IRA plan, or just, you know, buy, you know, growth st stocks or buy, you know, a good, you know, Coca-Cola or SCHD and go for the long haul and withdraw uh, and withdraw your money at 59 and and just like everybody else why do we need to make it more complicated and it is well because the reason why we do it because the system is really not fair it's it's really not uh, and i have lewis here with me and we're going to talk about this and you're going to hear the dialogue and conversation because we came from very similar background from real estate and he's almost he's a little older than i am but you're going to see that there's some unbalance within the system here. Hey, Lewis, how, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, so I'm 62, um, have been working in the high tech for a number of years. And at the age of 54, I was given my pink slip. Um, and at that time, I wasn't really prepared to retire, but um, I had some investments in real estate and then considered focusing on real estate uh, because I thought maybe that'd be a way to, to, to uh, carry me forward. Yeah. I, I had always thought my real estate would uh, be something that would be, be waiting for me when I retired, but not realizing that I would have to focus on that uh, some 10 years earlier than I expected. Um, and, and, and at that time, uh, the market was good, so I began to focus on real estate um, and had been focusing on real estate uh, from from then, which was 2014. Um, and I still am in real estate. I focus on that, and that's where a majority of my assets are. Um, but as of late, over the last few years, since the market kind of turned and the interest rates went up, I've had to hold back on my real estate focus and began to hoard hoard money mm -hmm. um, and then try to see a way how to get uh, increase my cash flow monthly cash flow so then I started looking at uh, money market accounts trying to you know since the interest rates went up you know they went to four or five percent yep. in a money market account so as opposed to jumping around and buying CDs, and last thing I wanted to do is buy bonds because when the interest rates, if they kept going up, then I would lose I would lose value. So yeah, yeah. I wanted to also be available to like pull money out, right? Because yep. the whole thing, the the disadvantage of real estate is uh, you can't easily pull out that money. So, so is that is that so, how you found our channel or found my YouTube videos or? Uh no, I I had. I, I knew I heard Tesla was out there because okay. I, I had in the past uh, chased after dividend yeah. yields. Um, I was in some ETNs that were sponsored by UBS, yeah. which had high high dividend monthly yields. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they were very risky. You know, they were leveraged uh, mortgage brokerage, uh, mortgage backed accounts, okay. uh, stocks. And so, you know, they went from twelve dollars, and they went down to zero when COVID hit because the lenders weren't getting paid because the uh, renters weren't paying them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, you know, I realized at that point, then the, the you know I shouldn't be chasing dividends because uh, that's risky business. Uh, so, yeah, let's. So, uh, can, uh... I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you. Uh, I, I was just yeah. going to ask you about you know real estate. So both of us come from. I came from real estate. Now, luckily for me, I sold pretty much all my properties uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, one thing in the military, I move around a lot, and and I just got tired of uh, of managing, and sometimes to fly, you know, very far away just to go look at the property. And then, you know, it's just not, it's not the same, you know, it's not the same. You live next door and you live uh, right. and then you can go manage it and look at it because you can hire the management company all you want. But at the end of the day, it's your property. The only one that care more about your property is you. And, 
Right. And yeah. So it, it that's that's the that's the one of fundamental problems. So I glad I when I sold out of all my positions, one of the uh, when it got hit with this interest rate stuff, uh, I'm so lucky. Yeah, I'm I guess I'm one of the lucky few because it it's not a good time right now for the buy or the, for the sellers. It's just it's just a hot it's a hot market. And one of my frustration, I wonder if you have this. I had a property. I tell this story all the time, uh, somewhere in Kentucky, and I could not sell this house for the life of me. And this house was losing my. I was losing like two thousand dollars a month every, every, every month. And uh, and and I got to the point where I just I just wanted to be sold. I didn't care what it is. And um, yeah, have you that had that happened to you? No. So- most of my properties were uh, within a 45 mile driving radius from where I'm at. I, yeah. I live in San Francisco yeah. in the Bay Area. Yeah. So, so yeah, there there was a few properties that that weren't doing as well as I would want them to do, but yeah. because I bought them at a good rate, it didn't really matter. It could just sit there. Yeah. Um, and I did. I did sell um, a majority of my real estate holdings um, up until during COVID. Like I think the last thing I sold was in 2020. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I then rolled that money into syndications, <laughs> which started buying stuff in like Texas and Alabama and Cleveland, Ohio. Um, but all that money is kind of frozen because none of that stuff is bringing any anything in right now. Um, but yeah, the, the issue is, you know, if you got something, you can't sell it, you know, the best thing you can do is just lower your price to get rid of it. Cause again, if it's costing you money to hold it and you can't find a, you know, a renter, then, you know, get rid of it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh did you, so for me, uh, once I, once the, the reason I would talk about, you know, be able to liquidate something, and this is one of the the grudge in the, or uh, in the investment world, you know. Because I came in, I've been making money, man, since I was like a little boy, you know. I mean, I know how to make money. I've been making money since I sell baseball card and comic books, but I'm new to buying mm-hmm. stocks, you know. I just never, I I knew I knew about it, I understood it, uh, I just never dab into it, you know. So I just, you know, because I had other investment vehicle. And so I don't need to do that, you know. And so when when I went in, when I came into investment nine months ago, back in January, and you hear the common themes, people talking about risk. They're like, there's all kind of risk. And and when they talk about risk, I I I I wonder, uh, you know, you as a real estate guy, and I came from that background. I was wondering if you have the same feeling because I was like, what are you talking about? What risk? This is not risk. Seriously, you're talking about well, this five percent, this company right here. You think it's going to go bankrupt or whatever it is? Like, what what risk are you talking about? And uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. so I have <laughs> I like no. So I I've actually bought a number of companies stock yeah. uh, stocks yeah. and companies that have yeah. actually gone belly up. Yeah. So so the risk is not getting out in time. All right. Um, okay. Don't you know and. You know, and believing that as the price gets cheaper, you're going to double your money into it yeah. to, again, yeah. lower your cost of invest, uh, your, your average cost of the stock. But it's it's averaging your cost of the stock on the way to zero. Um, I've done that. I've, you know, so I probably, I'm not I'm sure just curious, yet. I'm just curious, what's, what stock are we talking about here? Uh, uh, you remember one of them was called, one of them is called Berkeley, Berkeley technology or something okay, like that. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, technology stock, all right. right. But, but just, just um, group wide technology. How come you didn't go into the REIT? Like, oh, you, you didn't own home back then. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't do investment, home investment. You did it afterwards. Uh, right? Well, when you say didn't, so I, I, I bought my first home, which is the house I lived in. No, no, in the, you know how you know how the stock market has you know technology. REIT, yeah, REIT, R E I T. How come you didn't go yeah, into REIT? Yeah, I sold. 
so in in my retirement pro- profiles and my my wives, uh, you know, we, we bought a little bit in yeah. REITs during certain times. Um, and not to say that I I wouldn't necessarily buy it now, it, or I would wait. Yeah, until but the market no, no, I was just curious. The company that you filed for bankruptcy, uh, the the company that you bought that went bankruptcy, did you own any REIT during the time? Just curious on that. No, because I was primarily focused on those particular companies, and yeah. so I yeah, yeah because you came from that field, the technology. Those. You came from technology field, so you you're more familiar yeah. with those company. The positive side of it, right. not just the negative side. But we can't we can't control that. We okay. can't. Yeah, you know, well, can, well, well let's it. analyze it. I, I'm I'm more analytical, so let's analyze it. What caused it to fail? What will cause it to fail? I, it doesn't. So it, again, it's yeah. every time. Every time Tesla goes down, yeah. the stock price goes down. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. But and then and then when Tesla goes up, it doesn't go up as as much as it went down. Okay. Right? The only way we're gonna recoup the down amount is by the dividends potentially. And that is why I feel personally I was you know, if I got in last month or week or whatever, two weeks ago, when mm-hmm. it was like 13 and a half, I'd feel a lot better at 13 and a half than 14 and a half. But, we, you know, that's just how it goes. So you got um, in at 13 and a half and yet you're no, not I happy? Got, no, 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 no. I, if I got in at 13 and a half, I'd be a lot better than I am right now, which oh, is 14 what, what, and a half. But I'm still so good at 14 and a half. How much share yeah, do you 14. get in at 14 and a half? I thought that was personal information. I'm just kidding you. Well, you can just um, make it I up. Got, I, I don't know you. We don't know each other. I'm just curious, you know. Uh, my first crack at it was uh, 6,000 shares. All right. That's that's pretty pretty fair number for, you know, it's a good good chunk. And so you're not yeah, happy my, You're not happy with the dividends? Well, uh I'm not saying I'm not happy with it. I'm just as if you know, if we get past two two months and we're still at about the same price, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'll be under thirteen dollars, so I'll be very happy. That's where I'd like to be at. I think at the thirteen dollar range on my cost, um, will be a good. It would be a good sitting spot. Is my, what I'm looking I, at. I average my cost average is almost sixteen dollars, like fifteen ninety eight, something like that. All right, but I just make it sixteen dollar. I'm, I'm extremely happy. Extremely happy. I'm yeah, getting you, but it, so, so you're 16 on your price, but yeah. you also haven't taken off your dividend, right? Yeah, if, if you add my dividends, it's more than, than the loss. Because I didn't buy a $20. I didn't buy a 25 I bought it at, you know, it's right now sitting at $16. So Right. So you, so you bought it at $16. You're at least two months in, right? Not two months in. I was in, in for a while. Yeah, but yeah. But I, I, I averaged 2000 for the rest of the rest of my life, the rest of the, as uh, long as the company is still functional. Well, that, that's the part that I, I like about your, your enthusiasm, yeah. the rest of your life. I, it's not forever. Uh, don't well, my life is not that long. I, I'm, I, I'm Cambodian, yeah, so my, my life expectancy <laughs> is 40, 47 and I'm about to pass okay. it, you know? And so like, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not white American. I didn't grow up, you know, I was born in, I was born in another country. So when both my parents, I'm not adopted. I, I'm not, I'm not half. Both my parents are Cambodian, so uh, gene- right. genetically, for whatever reason, Cambodian's going to die at 47. So, but the lucky I live long enough because I live in America. I get to eat good food and healthy, and I I, I wear seatbelt. And statistically, I'm going to live a little longer. But however, no, I'm I'm like I'm going I'm going against the grain right now. Statistic average, you know. Yeah. yeah so, so with with okay. that. With that, with that short time frame is my point yeah. of it is yes, yeah. forever maybe tomorrow. Yeah, but just keep an eye on it. Yeah. You just should just keep an eye on it. That's all. And I, I guess if you bought it at sixteen and a half, you've been in it for at least a year, a, a month and a half or two. Your your real cost is like fifteen dollars. Yeah, yeah, or even less. Yeah, yeah. And but, so and so and if you're at three and if you're at in at three, then you're already uh, positive, even at fourteen and dollars and 62 cents yeah it, but but um you know this is like rental like yeah. like th- this is a part I, I i never understand about i guess you i guess you they have to own real estate you see like they own real estate i'm just right. happy that my i have tenants in my house and somebody paid me rent 
Exactly. As long as they that, pay me rent, is, I didn't that, care about anything else because I can control that. That that that's why stock has sort of always been a disadvantage, and I didn't like it so much, is yeah. because somebody wasn't paying me to use it, right? Yeah. So so th that's why in my mindset is like, what what are you guys what are you guys debating about? This company is paying seventy cents on the average now. It used to be eighty trades on, on average, but seventy cents on it's still higher than any other ETF out there. The only right. the only the only two ETF that beat it in August was Clip. And and VDY and and VDY yeah, there's yeah, only two. And and again, and again, I you know be careful when you're chasing yields. Yeah. Uh, so, but it, there's nothing wrong with it, but you just got to stay on top of it, you know. So. Well, I, I got um, that. I, I got that. I understood that. But the thing is, this thing is paying me dividends. So so yeah, yeah why why <laughs> like I, I'm happy like like I I told you like if the tenant is paying rent, you should be happy. Dude, don't make, don't piss that off. Don't go piss them off. Then they move. If they're paying rent, man, this this landlord out there would love to have the tenants I have, man. They were like, oh my god, that guy's been in your house for like ten years. Yeah, it's great, man. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Those people can't get tenants. And <laughs> it, so so it's it's uh so when you look at from that perspective, you go like, I, I'm really happy, man. Tesla is giving me money. As long as it give me more than twenty cents, man, because then I just go switch and buy SVOL or buy JP, JPQ or whatever, you know, for the same but, amount. I was like, you know, I was like, but but it's giving me like fifty cents, sixty cents, seventy cents. I'm good, man. I'm like, dude, this is this is awesome. Like I get more right. money from Tesla than I get from one of my houses, you know, at least two, three of my houses combined. I have I own a lot of homes, but at one point I own a lot of homes. But I'm just happy, I'm just happy that man, this this thing is giving me dividends. So I I don't see I don't see the flaws in it as much. Like some people look at it and go like, man, Tesla is the end of the world. You own it, it's high risk, and you you're gonna fail. Nav erosion, this thing gonna go down to zero. I'm like, man, what are you? Are you crazy? What are you talking about, man? Until they well, don't I, pay I, dividends. Until they don't pay dividends, then this would be a conversation. I have no problem leaving Tesla. I have no problem. I have no problem leaving Tesla and buy SHD. I have no problem leaving Tesla and buy Altaria. I have no problem leaving any of the yield max for anything. Because money is money. It doesn't matter how you make it. Whether you make 20% yield or 70% yield or 5% yield. You just want to keep continue well, making I, money. And, and, and I, I think like, like with real estate mm -hmm. um, and and Jeff and whatever stock you buy, don't yeah. get married to it, right? It's yeah. it's just the it's just the the mode in getting what you need to get. Yeah, yeah. don't get married to it. Don't don't don't, don't fall in love with her. You know, dude, just, Tesla it's, is it's the pretty girl in the room, man. She's the pretty girl, man. But don't fall in love. Yeah, don't a, fall lot, in a lot love. of guys, a lot of guys gonna be chasing her. And and but you know what? Hey, you know what? As as soon she, as what what happened when a pretty girl walk into a room? Guess what? All the village, all the pretty girl in the village, they're gonna come to the room, and in a few, yeah. and a few, in a few months, Rex Share is gonna gonna open up their single stock funds as a competitor to right. Max.